Hello and welcome to my workshop. So we're going to be going into the rear cargo area today and adding in some detail uh, down the side. So what we have, you know, is straight up and down sides. They're much narrower than what it comes stock and it looks does look more realistic but the the real Jeep does have this this protrusion here. It's just not the big giant box that that's the same height as this it's actually comes down so I started working on one side to get a, an idea and it went together pretty quickly so what we'll have is the start of a piece here in the back and I'll add on to it in the front I'll probably have to come in here with um, with some plastic epoxy and j after these two pieces are glued together and join it smooth it make it transition because this is the, the back's not so bad, I just kind of round off this section in the back and that should be pretty close to what it would look like. But the front, it, it tapers down to the, to the front here, but it also uh, rounded over this way. So it's, it, to make it at a styrene, I'm probably going to have to make some kind of a structure, put the plastic epoxy on it and then sand it down to get it to look halfway decent. So I have done some light sanding on the front, just kind of getting rid of some of the body lines, the mold, the mold issues that this, this has, like every plastic body would have. Uh, filling in some of these with the Tamiya putty, working on sanding the, down the, the cab. I have the, uh, the crack uh, glued back together and some Tamiya putty put in to kind of sand that down. Uh, a little thin coat of Tamiya putty and some epoxy here. And it's starting to come together pretty well, but, you know, it, it still needs a little more here and there sanding uh, before I, uh, I'm ready to uh, put some color on it. So let's get started with that.
So we're able to get both of these little rear pieces made up, and they really don't look like a whole lot right now, but uh, there's still a lot of uh, finish work to be done onto them. Uh, I have started creating the front portion, and this one even probably looks even worse. But what this will do, what this will do is extend that that portion down and give my multiple angles I was looking for to continue forward. So I just really needed a good structure to be able to lay the uh, plastic epoxy on without having to use like basically the whole tube of plastic epoxy. So what I'll be able to do is to push some right on here and you know obviously it'll go down the hole there, go down there right there. But it should be enough structure to to hold that plastic epoxy in long enough uh, for it to dry. And so usually it's, a, it's pretty thick so it's not going to droop. Now all of these pieces will act like keys once it's pressed down in. I'll come back and sand and smooth this down round this over really good to the front and give this contour. It'll be mounted and glued onto here. I'll continue the epoxy up onto here and get this all rounded and contoured to look more like the original rear section of the Jeep. Um, I still have to work on fitment, so things like right here, I don't want to rely on the screw holding that down, so I'm probably going to have to do some sanding um, on this piece so that it will go back in smoothly. And then the screws, just, they do have screws that hold it down, but I want it to fit right, and I don't want the screws to be pulling it down and getting into a bind, so I'll just do a little bit of light sanding on the front and make sure that's a good gap. I'll also want to do the doors as well. So I'll put the doors back on and uh, sand them down to give a little bit of a reveal, especially here in the front. And what I found out is when you, if you don't clearance this a little bit, when you paint it, the buildup of the paint could cause this not to fit because it is a very, very snug fit from factory. There's no paint on the on this. In fact, this is just a the, the color it came with red was actually the color of the plastic they use. So anyway, um, like I said, going to get into making these and then going, doing a couple other items. So um, let's get started.
So what we <clears throat> were able to do is to take off just a little bit around the door just to give a little more clearance for this uh, to fit in. Um, we First we did, we uh, set this up in the door back with the pins and just kind of looked at the gaps, marked it with a marker just to give an idea of where we needed to trim and then went back and filed and sanded this down smooth. Um, and as a reminder what happens when you put the paint on you know this piece and this piece it builds this up and if you go back with pretty much what it had is a zero clearance then your door will just get stuck about like right there it won't it won't physically won't close so we, all we did was just to give a little bit of a gap all the way around so the door is nice and smooth we also cut a little bit off the top and the bottom of the hinge because that'll also build up as well with paint and then the idea is when we put the paint on it the clear coat it'll build that back to the point where it's it closes this gap up and it's gonna look really good but we got both sides completed and they fit really nicely and they, they have good action move open and close and um, then all we got to do is get on to the next step which is sanding these down primering and then they'll be ready for paint that's really the only thing left to do for these So while we had the file out, we also cleaned up the front edge of this windshield. Again, this fits very nicely from the factory, but if you add any paint onto it at all, then it just gets built up so much that it will no longer fit. So we, we give this a little bit of a pre-gap and try to make it as even as possible in the, in the hopes that when we put the paint back on, it'll fit nice and snug. I'd like to get the rear end finished up, sanded and primered, but I'm holding off on that for the license plate. I think I've decided to keep the um, the, the spare tire carrier. It, it does not look very good, but once you get the spare tire on there, it actually does. It, it works very well, and um, it's not that hard to put on a spare tire so that. So I want to leave that on in case somebody wants to put a, in case want to put a spare tire on. The uh, license plate, uh, I'm going to get some measurements and make a piece of styrene that's going to mount in here, so it'll be flush on this flat part, and then extend out over where it curves in. And it probably the best of pictures I could tell, it's probably going to extend past this edge just a little bit. Um, I'm going to try to, to kind of scoot it over as much as possible so it's not sticking out a great deal. Because I think the original one is, it's not quite sticking out as bad as the fender, but it's it's way out there. And I just think that's going to catch on everything. So I'll tuck this in as close as possible. 